Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Listen, um, I'm hoping to retire and relocate very, very soon. Uh, it might be months before I get back online. Uh, Lord only knows what YouTube's going to do with the channel. So I am going to severely limit my uh, internet presence. And uh, just so you know, I am on Bright Eon. I'm going to leave a link in the description and pin the link in the comments. And also, I have hundreds of studies, many hours of studies on the playlist. Find something in the playlist that you find interesting. And, um, you know, I'm not one of the ones that's always begging for money every five minutes. Uh, I don't do this for money. So, uh, you know, and uh, if you hear something that doesn't sound quite right, well, take a look at the scriptures. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that uh, I was surprised when uh, I start digging into the scriptures. You know, but I'm one of those people when somebody tells me something that sounds crazy, um, and they've got a little bit of proof to back it up. I mean, I'll dig in and take a look at it if it interests me anyways. I mean, I don't go down every rabbit hole, but if something sounds like it's important, you know, the thing is, doctrines are important. And people say, well, you know, doctrines aren't really important just as long as you believe. Believe what? Uh, the Mormons believe in Jesus, but they believe he's uh, the brother of Satan. I mean, you want to stand before Jesus and say, oh, yeah, hi, Satan's brother. How you doing? No. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe in Jesus, but he's Michael the Archangel with a different name. Um, from what I understand, the Unitarians believe in Jesus, but Jesus was just a man that discovered the God spark within him that they say that all of us have. We just got to... Discover that we're God. We're just, we're God. God, you know, when you realize that you're God, then you can become God. But that's, that's what they teach. So, is doctrine important? What does the Bible say? Well, in uh, Matthew 7, 28, we read, And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Matthew 15, verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Matthew 16, 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but beware, not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. See, Jesus warned people to beware of the doctrines of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Verse, uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Whose doctrine? Christ. At his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Mark 1, 27. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. So, you see, doctrine's important. In John... Ver, uh, chapter 7, verses 16 and 17. Jesus answered them, answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Acts 2.42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread 
and in prayers. And then in Acts 5.28, the Jews said, uh, Jews were saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? What name? Jesus. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. In Acts 13.12, Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believing being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Romans 6.17 But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Romans 16.17 Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause division and offenses, offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Now, in 1 Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that means the end times, right? that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Oh yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Unitarians, uh, pff, the list is almost endless. There's like 666 different versions of churchianity. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. Huh. So there's the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine of the Father that Christ is teaching, and then there's doctrines of devils. In 1 Timothy 4.16, Paul says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Huh. 1 Timothy 6.3 If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. 2 Timothy 3.16 Here's a beautiful one. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. 2 Timothy 4.3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Sounds like he's talking about uh, TBN, right? How important is doctrine? How about uh, second, second John chapter 1 and verse 9? Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Do Jews have the doctrine of Christ? Ask that question in church sometime. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Verse 10, If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. 
Now, why, uh, let's see. Neither bid him Godspeed. For him that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. What do they mean by Godspeed? That's like saying, God bless you. When the Mormons come to your house and tell you, uh, well, they, they won't tell you, but, you know, say that uh, Jesus is Satan's brother, and you say, God bless you or Godspeed, that makes you partaker of their evil deeds. You know, maybe, maybe we're not supposed to let them in our house because our house will become cursed with the same demonic spirits that they have. I, I don't know. I, I can't see that kind of stuff. I don't have that kind of spiritual discernment, but uh, that's what I would um, that's what I would think. So is doctrine important? Oh yeah, I think so. And we got to have the doctrine of Christ. And if you don't know the doctrine of Christ, may I suggest you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you'll learn. The doctrine of Christ. So, um, all right, people. So, if you uh, don't hear from me for a while, uh, don't be too concerned. I'm either moving or I'm in a, uh, they got rid of me or I'm in a camp somewhere. Maybe a prison camp. You never know. I'm on so many lists. Uh, <laughs> when the time comes, boy, they're going to be looking for me. And God willing, that uh, the Lord will have me escape out of their hand. I hope that uh, he has plans for me to help the remnant. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to die for the faith. I don't know. But um, somebody wrote me and said, you know what? Um, and said, you know what? When you uh, decide to follow Christ, you have to count the cost. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus said, if uh, if they hate you, they hated me first. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but, you know, that's the way it is, people. So, all right, well, I'm on Brighteon. I'm on, uh, take a look at my YouTube playlists. I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of studies. And, uh, you know, just, you don't need to be looking for new studies. I've got a lot of old stuff. I got a, a study on Elijah that's one hour and 45 minutes long. A lot of good. He's going to be coming back one day. He's going to be one of the two witnesses that confronts the beast. He's going to be that one of those two witnesses that are killed and lie in the streets for three days and is going to be resurrected that the world's going to see probably on live television. Boy, let the Antichrist explain that away. And he's going to be telling the world about Jesus. You know, so, uh, you know, I've got a lot of good studies out there. I, you know, I, I don't have all the answers. There's a lot of things I don't know. But, um, you know, like I say, I'm a volunteer. I don't, I'm not a professional. I don't get paid. So, uh, you know, with volunteers, uh, just remember, you get what you pay for in this life, right? So, uh all right, so take a look at the links, and you can find uh, my studies for the stuff I've been doing. I've been, you know, I've been on the internet for uh, over ten years, people. I've been on YouTube for almost ten years. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>